Good morning, everybody. Uh, today, we're going to go over something that just kind of came to me probably a couple days ago. Um, it's the concept, and I, I guess there's probably a few ideas about it that we're going to go over today. But the main concept being the question once saved always saved um so there's actually two main argument of points that i've kind of seen and one is once saved right once you've come to salvation um it's essentially impossible to become unsaved, right? That that uh, covering, I guess, that salvation covers you for the sake of all time, I guess, right? Which would be one point. Second point being that once you've come into salvation, once you've received the covering of the blood of Messiah, um, you almost, in a sense, naturally follow a path of more righteousness, right? Making it increasingly harder as you get into it um, to essentially fall away, right? But even with that point, um, with one extreme of it, I guess, they essentially say that, I guess, one side of things for that argumentative point, sorry, um, is I guess it becomes this repetition where it's impossible to fall away right whereas the other side of things would say it is possible to fall away but their their argument would be that if you've gotten to a point where you do fall away that um you probably never received true salvation to begin with. You received what you believed to be salvation. You thought you were saved, right? But you didn't receive a true understanding of it, in a sense. Um, so those are kind of the two arguments I've seen. Um, or I guess two differing understandings of it. But I thought I'd go through a few verses out of scripture that kind of talks about it and see what we can come up with. So, if we flip to 2 Peter, here somewhere, 2 Peter, Second Peter chapter 3. In verse 17, so Second <clears throat> Peter 3, verse 17, you then, beloved ones, being forewarned, watch, lest you fall from your own steadfastness, being led away with the delusion of lawlessness, and then going into 18 as well, but grow in the favor of and knowledge of our master and savior Yeshua Messiah to him be the esteem both now and to a day that abides amen so with this verse we can clearly see that it is possible to fall away so first thing it is possible right you can turn away uh you know if you look all through proverbs <clears throat> time and time again it tells you to heed wisdom and understanding um things such as uh raise your children in the way that they must go so that they do, that that they do not depart from it when they are older meaning that they can grow away from the faith right so first and foremost i understand that it's fully possible 
to <clears throat> turn away, to turn a more, turn to a more wicked path and leave the path of righteousness, falling away from the faith. At which point, I mean, at least for a time, the Father will cling on to you and, and try to pull you back in. But there will be a point that, you know, the Father will cut you off, right? Um, the second scripture, <clears throat> Hebrews chapter 6. So a short flip over to Hebrews chapter 6, starting in verse 4. <clears throat> For it is impossible for those who were in, once enlightened and have tasted the heavenly gift and have become partakers of the set-apart spirit and have tasted the good word of Elohim and the powers of the age to come and fall away to renew them again to repentance, having impaled themselves, having impaled for themselves the son of Elohim, Yeshua, Again, I put him to open shame. Wow. So, essentially, it's saying if you were once enlightened, tasting the heavenly gift, you know, receive salvation, become partakers of the set-apart spirit. So the Ruach was dwelling within you, right? You were being led by spirit. Tasted the good word of Elohim. You were in this word. You were doing the things. And then you fall away. It's saying it is impossible for those people to renew them again to repentance. Right? They already came to a sense of repentance. They turned from their wicked ways. They started following the Father. They came to. Right? Then they fell away. You can't renew them as a new creature again. Let them receive salvation again. And turn to repentance. And then this last part. Having impaled themselves. For themselves. The son of Elohim again. Right? Uh, and put him to open shame. <clears throat> so. We already impaled Yeshua once. Right? His own people turned on him. The Jewish people. Turned him in. Turned their backs on him. And impaled him. Right? And, you know, with that came salvation and whatnot. But here it's saying that you're essentially doing it again. You're abusing the grace and mercy of Messiah and what he did for you. <clears throat> and now you're putting him to open shame. You're openly shaming him to the world, right? Essentially, that's not good news for you. You don't want to do that. Don't fall away. Don't turn your back on the Father after He's brought you back home and into the kingdom. Um, now in John chapter 15. Oh, that was just there. <coughs> Starting in verse 4 again. <clears throat> and I believe this is Messiah talking. Stay in me and I stay in you. As the branch is unable to bear fruit of itself. Unless it stays in the vine. So neither you unless you stay in me. I am the vine and you are the branches. He who stays in me and I in him. He bears much fruit. Because without me. You are able to do not. If anyone does not stay in me, he is thrown away as a branch and dries up, and they gather them and throw them into the fire, and they are burned. So here Messiah is saying, just as a branch that is not rooted or grafted in to the, uh, the tree, it can't produce fruit without being grafted in or rooted to what does produce fruit. It'll wither up, it'll die. And when they 
clean it up, they take those dying withered branches and they throw it into the fire. Gehinnom. But everybody understands is hell, right? The eternal pit. Um, so he's saying that he is the vine. And I know I was saying tree earlier, my apologies, but the vine, right? We are the branches. And even if you're not, you know, he rooted, right? We are all grafted in. And once you're grafted into the vine, you have to stay in it. Because without it, you'll get plucked out. You won't produce any fruit, right? Elsewhere it says, you shall know them by their fruits. <clears throat> what fruits are they producing? Well, if you're not in Messiah, you're not producing any, right? You can't. I guess you can essentially, metaphor aside, produce bad fruits, right? If you're not following a path of righteousness, you're following a path of wickedness. But here another clear example that if you're not, if you're not doing what you're supposed to, especially after coming into Messiah, being grafted into the vine, you can't fall away, right? You can be plucked out of the vine, <clears throat> and then you can wither and die, because the wages of sin is death, right? First John three four, and you will be thrown into the fire. So, very powerful stuff there. So, if we flip to First Timothy. Come on, fiendies. Timothy, uh, chapter 4, starting in verse 1. <clears throat> but the Spirit distinctly says that in the late, latter times, some shall fall away. So again, you could fall away, right? From the belief. Paying attention to misleading spirits and teachings of demons. <laughs> speaking lies and hypocrisy. Having... Branded on their own cons on their own conscience, sorry, forbidding to marry, saying to abstain from foods which Elohim created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. <laughs> so obviously it goes on from there, but <clears throat> the Spirit distinctly says, so the Ruach, you know, the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> it says in latter times, so some shall fall away from the belief. So they were already in belief and they fell away. And not only that, they were paying attention to misleading spirits as well as the teachings of demons. Now, without going into a rabbit hole, which I am known to do from time to time, um... Think of things such as, especially in this day and age, everybody pays attention to their horoscopes, um, their signs, you know, whatever you want to call them. Astrology, right? It gets to an extreme, not always, but it gets to an extreme in my experience <clears throat> where people almost use these things as a tool of to predicting the future and almost allowing it to predict the type of person they become right they almost follow it down to a t some of these people um the belief of healing crystals and precious stones and gems you know such a, all that nonsense right all these things that have no power the only power given unto them is that from elohim right Things like that, right? Teachings from demons? Well, from my understanding, demons, at least a good portion of them, where did they come from? They're probably the ones that fell with Satan. The Watchers, the ones that produced the Nephilim, right? That whole rabbit hole is what I'm saying. They were teaching. If you go read Enoch, right? It's a good read. First Enoch, not, not any of the other ones. They kind of suck. But First Enoch <clears throat> goes heavily into that, right? And all these different angels that fell, the watchers. 
were teaching humans some of these things even back then. You know, there was there was one teaching uh, the art of war, basically. You know, how to craft the weapons of war, how to go to war, do battle, stuff like that. How to kill one another. Um, one was teaching women how to be beautiful and use makeup and you know, such the like. One was teaching astrology, the signs of the heavens and whatnot teachings of demons, right? My point here is I think scripture is clearly telling us or forewarning us rather. It's almost quite easy to fall away if you're not doing the right things, right? Messiah called you for a purpose, for a reason, and it wasn't to say, "Oh yeah, I believe this. I read scripture every day." You know. And Continue on with your life, right? Shall we sin all the more that grace may abound? No, y'all forbid. Well, um, I have two more verses, and I think I'll read one more. But I think I'm kind of getting my point across here. Once saved, always saved. I don't think so. Now, I kind of fit into... Uh, or not fit into, but I kind of agree a little bit with the one point of view that though it is possible to fall away, um, once you are saved, once you've received on to truth, salvation, you start following that path, right? The path of righteousness. It does become increasing harder if you're staying in it to fall away, but it's not impossible. Um, look, we're all sinners, right? We all fall short. We all break the law from time to time, and hopefully unwillfully. But even so, it's not the goal that we want. We don't want to be okay with our imperfectness necessarily. We have to understand that's going to happen, right? But praise y'all, we have Yeshua. That when we do fall short, <clears throat> that when we do mess up, we have a benchmark. Number one, we have salvation, right? We have the blood to cover us. We can seek the Father's face on the matter and be like, look, I know I did this. I didn't mean to do this. But lead me away from it and focus me on the right path, you know? First and foremost, but secondly, we have the benchmark of when we do mess up, Messiah's example and all of the scripture is something to base ourselves off of so that we can continue to see where we fall, right? <laughs> so that it doesn't go unnoticed and that we continue in it, but that we can see it firsthand and be like, oh, well, Messiah didn't do that, right? And now you know, oh, I messed up. And so you repent from that. You turn back and you you follow on to righteousness again, right? Um, so th this is my understanding. I don't know why I really felt the need to bring this all up, but I do think there's this misunderstanding out there um, with a lot of people that once you see received salvation um, once you've become saved, right? Whether you have a full understanding of it or not, they, they teach you in some places. And I was subject to this uh, most of my life that you're good, right? Because we all sin, we're all gonna sin. And, but once you have understanding, as long as you try to be your best person that you can be, you're good, right? Because Messiah takes care of the rest. That's not, that's not so true. Um, I think it's important for all of us to understand that the benchmark has been made. Messiah didn't just come <clears throat> to save us from ourselves. I mean, he did because he knew that we couldn't 
save ourselves, but he also came because nobody could figure out how to do it right. I mean, read all of the Old Testament. They'll start doing it right, but the moment they don't have an example anymore, someone to lead them in the right way, boy, it doesn't take time at all, and they start falling away. They start false worshiping. They start worshiping idols. They, you know, everything. Everything wrong that they could do, they start doing it. And time and time again, Yah sends a man, a leader, to turn them back, to repent, right? And lead the nation back to him. But the moment that guy's gone, they start doing it again. And it's just repeated over history. And then we got Messiah. That, that was probably the plan all along. Send a son in to save the world, right? <clears throat> because we weren't doing it ourselves. But most importantly, he came to embody the Torah. To give us that example. Because even when... Uh, he came to save. like It could have been another person, right? He could have just sent another person to lead him for a time. But the problem was we needed a more permanent example of how to live this life perfectly. Someone to come in and do it. Because over time and time and time again, Israel forgot what they were supposed to be doing. I mean, there was a point in history where they spent 400 years in bondage and slavery completely forgot about their history and culture almost all together, right? Because they were serving the Egyptians in Mitzrayim, <clears throat> in Egypt. And they have all their own gods and all their previous pharaohs that they worship and whatnot and all these different customs. And for a span of 400 years, you know, you kind of get used to that. Why do you think it took them... 40 years wandering in the desert to fully come to and understand, oh, this is where we came from. All right? You know, you see that time and time again. These people, though they had the, maybe not the way we do in today's day and age, but they had the tools and the understanding of what they were supposed to be doing, right? But they still messed it up. What difference do you have to not mess it up, right? You have every tool you could ever need in these, in these words, in this heart, in this mind, connecting with Yah and walking with Yeshua daily. All the tools in the world. What makes you think you can't mess it up, that you can't fall away? and be disregarded from the Father. I mean, that's gotta be the scariest place in the world, man. Being totally and utterly disregarded by the Father. He wants nothing to do with you. And, you know, at the end of an age, you're gonna be utterly destroyed, right? Is that what you want? No, right? So I know I went off on a bit of a tangent there. And I hope there was some understanding that may come from this for somebody out there because I know for many years <clears throat> growing up Baptist I had that misunderstanding myself right I honestly thought I, I misunderstood salvation is what I did um, and yes I had poor influences but at the same time I have no one to blame but myself I didn't seek out my own understanding like I have in the past few years but <clears throat> so to answer the question once saved always saved I don't think so um can you fall away yes and once you fall away more importantly can you come back into repentance I don't think so based on that scripture we read just a minute ago um now what is falling away it's not your daily, oops, I messed up, right? I don't think that's what it's talking about. It, it's 
completely disregarding the Torah, completely disregarding and bringing to shame Messiah, completely disregarding the Father in your heart and turning back fully to a path of wickedness, right? I think that's what it's talking about. False worship, worshiping false idols, you know, whatever. That would be falling away in my eyes. And maybe I'm wrong. But I do know one thing. We all have bad days, right? We have mess ups. We all make mistakes. <clears throat> We're all going to fall short. So it's not saying that because you fall short, you've fallen away. That's not what I'm saying. So keep your heart condition in the right place. And... Keep your mindset on the forefront of the belief in Messiah and following in our Father's word and his living example of the word Yeshua, doing all that he commands us to do. Seek out a relationship with him. You know, do the things. That's, that's essentially what I'm saying, do the things. But that being said, <clears throat> I hope you got as much out of this as I did and <clears throat> I hope that it leads somebody out there onto the right path if you liked it please leave a like share with somebody if you think uh, they need to hear it themselves uh, but with that being said I hope y'all have a blessed day Shalom